Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. Today's guest is really going to be motivating you to take action on photography. I'd like to welcome Tom and Lisa Kuchara. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you're co-chair of a huge event that takes place every year called NECCC. What does that mean and, what is, and what's that all about? It's the New England Camera Club Council Conference photography conference. So mm -hmm. it's basically once a year we get together in July and we have a immersion into photography. We have new photographers come, professional photographers come, people have been coming for a long time, and everybody kind of gets together and just learns for an entire weekend about photography. It's kind of like a big family event. If, if mm -hmm. you've been there before, you're welcomed back. Mm -hmm. And if you're new, you're welcomed right in. There's an orientation for new people. Yeah. About 33% of the attendees are first time, and then the rest of them are people who have been coming for many, many years, and there is a way of being able to orientate yourself so that even though there's a lot to choose from, we have a person, Antoinette Gambita, that does a great job Fabulous of being job. able to tell you, like, all right, you know, arrange your schedule, do this, don't miss this, check out this, and help people be able to pick the things that they're most interested in. Yeah, about how many people attend this every year? Um, we have just under a thousand people that attend it, so it's one of the largest photography conferences of its sort, um, but yet the classes are pretty small. Um, the classes can range anywhere from five people in some of the hands-on classes to maybe 30 people in some of the workshops and then some of the bigger lecture halls could have you know 50 or 100 people in them. And then this year I understand you're having more walkabouts and so what is about, that all about? about 14 walkabouts uh, some of the photographers will like uh, the Olympus, Canon, uh, Sony, Nikon uh, photographers will um, you know gather groups of people together and they will do specific things you know. So you just mentioned a word I think a lot of people don't know and mm -hmm. kind of terrifies me a little bit. I'm going to get into it. Focus stacking. Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful if I get the camera and focus once. Yeah. What is focus stacking? <laughs> uh, focus. You're asking me to do more than one picture? <laughs> yes. It, 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 it's a way of um, creating a sharp picture from beginning to end, from the foreground to the background. And there is a way to um, selectively defocus the background if you want a background out of focus, but you want everything in between focus. And it, uh, some cameras can do it in camera. Um, and most of the time, the cameras, uh, the focus stack is through Photoshop or Helicon Focus or other uh, programs. So, right. There is yeah. always <clears throat> so much to learn. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And it's exhausting day. Mapping. Don't tell anybody. This is our. This, is well, our this, this year you will be at the. Uh, She's going to be an Center. amazing speaker. We'll yes. talk about her later. Yeah. On okay, in the I'll, yeah. okay, I'll take it. But you mentioned a good word as far as like getting exposed to things. So it is kind of like a buffet. Like maybe you are at a certain spot in your photography mm -hmm. or like a certain type of photography, but there's so many things to choose from that maybe you do say, "Ooh, what is focus stacking?" And you could kind of try it out as like a like you would a buffet. Maybe something you wouldn't spend a whole weekend learning about, but you could go and just attend that part of the conference and, and pick a, up something new. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. And I also think another aspect of this conference is you start to meet some people mm -hmm. and you start learning in the conversations over meals, the meals there, you can, there are a variety of ways you can do meals, mm -hmm. but you sit next to somebody. If you go alone, I also want to stress, you don't have to go with somebody. Right. You can be a single person, male or female, Go alone and be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you and there's always someone there that's going to chat. And you, so what kind of camera do you have? Right. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. and you know, and trust me, I hope they have Nikon's. I know you don't. <laughs> you have you have something else. We're now. Olympus. Now. Olympus. Yeah, Olympus. Okay, fine. Yep. Well, let's get into some pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, this is you. You're having 35 speakers, Correct. and so our first image coming up on a monitor is going to be an overview of all the speakers that are going to be at the um, 
conference. So one of the things that we attempted to do, Tom and I have been chair co-chairs last year and then this year, is to bring in speakers that are all over the country, not just local speakers that people might have heard before at a variety of other camera organizations, but people that are new to our conference. So most of the speakers have never spoken at our conference before. They're very well established speakers, but they're new to our conference. So we have people coming from the West Coast, from you know all over the place, including somebody from Canada, somebody from Argentina. So we have people from all over coming to give us their expertise and their little slice of tips and tidbits. That's interesting because there's no way for me as an individual to go to all those places and take classes. Mm -hmm. So this is a very unique opportunity. Yeah. Now I understand you have a, a char some characters. In the next slide we're going to yeah. see characters and we're going to Let's see Knights of Gore. <laughs> I mean, really, my mama might be watching this. <laughs> well, the, uh, the Knights of Gore are a, uh, a Renaissance Fair armored combat unit on a bunch of nice guys. We met them a few years ago, and they've uh, heartily agreed to come to the, the NECCC. Uh, Nikon is sponsoring them this year, and they're going to do a uh, little walkabout with them as well as uh, some video to uh, highlight some of their uh, video features of their new camera. So they actually you know, do battles yep. and the video, uh, it could be still or video yeah. um, for the battles. Yeah. And then there's a group of over 10 of them that will be mm -hmm. available for still photography yep. as well. So they come I, dressed in period Renaissance armor and I think there will be about 14 to 16 uh, Knights of Gore people. I saw some of these last yeah. year. And they're, the, they're made mm -hmm. up of uh, squires and, and uh, lords, you know, as they call them, you know. Uh, during the Renaissance. So. And the cool thing about yeah. this, when you photograph these people and way or bend mm -hmm. this way or put your arm on someone, they take direction. They'll do. They they're there to do what you want. We a found lot. last year that the the character models were a little reticent coming because it was the first time they were ever asked, and now they are really looking forward to coming. So Batman, and spider Batman, Man. But like you said, sometimes Man. people have a hard time mm -hmm. taking pictures of people. A lot of times it's easier to take pictures of non-people. Cars. And yeah. And ask them, and like you said, then you have to tell them how to pose and what kind of expression you want. But Batman knows how to be Batman, so mm -hmm. it made it really easy last year for people yes. to get their foot in the door of photographing people and have a little fun with some of these characters. There was a smiles on their faces, and that was what we looked for. That was our litmus test that we kind of hit the character on the head, so to speak. <laughs> it was yes. a smile on the face, and, and uh, everybody loved the fact that the you saw Batman. You, you you saw, you know, some other characters you didn't Penguin, know about. Ladybug, I didn't know about Ladybug, you know? so there were superheroes I didn't and know about. <laughs> how could you not know about Ladybug? Right, and it was, it was fun, and people really liked it. And I think that's the operative mm -hmm. word, it was fun. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that I'm going to have available to me mm -hmm. on, a, on a daily, yearly basis, unless I go to something like this, and it's an opportunity to photograph where you don't normally have these things available. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very interesting. Now, I understand the fourth one we're going to see is Adam Jones' work on the monitors coming up. And who is Adam Jones? So Adam Jones is, oh, well, these are the Knights of Gore. So the last slide was oh. the characters, the, the superheroes and cosplay people. These are the Knights of, of Gore. So the next slide, I think, is Adam Jones. Okay. And he's a canon explorer of light. So he's been picked by canon as a visionary, as this explorer of light, to be able to share his expertise about photography. So he photographs a variety of landscapes and animals, uh, the top pictures from Palouse. Um, he's actually going to be photographing horses and llamas over at the Hadley Barns, um, as well as giving some programs and giving tips for you how to approach your you know light landscape photography is in the uh, bottom corner and I'm thinking what a terrific shot yeah how did he get them to line up like that <laughs> well he, he asked, have to go to the um, conference to find yeah, out oh. yes. <laughs> also when you talk about big animals you got to ask them politely oh. <laughs> The, uh, but Adam will talk about lens choices when you're, when you're photographing large animals, uh, depth of field, where to focus on the animal and things like that to give people some technical instructions. It's not going to be Africa, but it'll, it'll provide some fundamental insight into using your lenses, what shutter speed to use for a big lens, what depth of field you're looking okay, for. Okay, it's not Africa, but there are some terrific zoos in New England. Absolutely. And there yeah. are some terrific um, uh, 
I mean, I, not habitats, um, uh, mm -hmm. animal rescue centers, yes. and I'm thinking birds of prey. Yeah. And mm -hmm. There are so many places. So, okay, a goal in my life is to go to Africa, but if I don't make it there, I've been to several zoos, and mm -hmm. you can, that, that is all. Um, Photoshop program on how he edits his wildlife pictures. So for nature pictures, it's very different than say a creative photographer. So he's going to be doing his how to take better pictures of landscape and animals, but then also he's doing a session on how to edit those pictures as well. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have time to see everything I want to see. You won't have time to see everything. That was one of our goals is that people said, oh my God, we couldn't see everything. And we thought that was actually a good criticism of the conference. Oh my God. <laughs> I already know I'm going to have to Sleep a little before a, I go. It was a method to our madness. <laughs> okay. Now, the next one is Ann Belmont. She mm -hmm. um, does flowers in something called Lens Baby. Lens Baby is a selective focus type of technique, and it's one of these things that we see, and when we see a picture of it, we admire it, and then we purchase the lens. And then we figure out, oh, it's actually harder to do this than we think. So when you go to the conference, you're actually trying these lenses with somebody like Anne, who is a Lens Baby ambassador. You actually get to be able to see how to really do these lenses. Because you can make a blurry picture that doesn't look so good. She does it in a very creative way. And it's called selective you know, focus, where there's things in focus, definitely. But there's other parts of the image that are out of focus to be able to allow your eye to be drawn to certain parts of the image. So she's doing a pre-conference workshop at Magic. Magic Wing, so she's doing flowers and butterflies, but then she's also got an open session mm -hmm. where you can actually borrow a lens baby or bring the lens baby mm -hmm. maybe that you purchased and is sitting in your closet because you don't know how to use it mm -hmm. and take better pictures with it. And that's not uncommon, <clears throat> excuse me, especially for me to buy things that have no idea what to do with it so mm -hmm. or yep. lose it before you've used it. But those flowers, people have a very positive, strong reaction to this type of photography. And I'm looking at these images and I'm thinking, oh my God, these are beautiful. These are absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So she's a way of being able to really come and learn how to do this and walk away after a session with her and going, Go, oh, I can improve my flower photography. Going to a conference of this size and with the numerous um, choices to make gives you an opportunity to select a palette of photography choices, you know, and, and to try without minimal cost. Yeah, and, and also, I think that's the benefit um, of any CCC. The schedule is available online now, mm -hmm. so you don't have to wait till you get there that weekend to say, "I no. want to go here, here, yep. and here." Right. Mm -hmm. You can start, and you know, it's like it's like any like cat. Remember the old Sears catalog? You mm -hmm. turn a page. I want this, this, and this. <laughs> yeah. Turn another page. Yep. And I'm dating myself. Exactly. And look at it and say, oh, I would like yeah. this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Because you brought here the um, things, I got this wet beforehand, yep. but you, you brought the programs that are there, but you don't have when they're taking right. place. So some of the programs take place more than once over the weekend, and you get to choose what you want to go to when. Um, and it is available online, necccphotoconference.org. And we put it as a PDF, but we also put it as an Excel document because some people like to be able to really customize their So we have it in a because different people like different ways of playing with their schedule. I like using a highlighter. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yep. Yeah. that's why it's up there. In th it's up there in three different formats. That's so. old yep. school, but so, but that is good for people who are thinking. Well, what? Do, they don't have to wait until the last minute to Correct. choose what to do. They get to think about it, and and if there's something on there they don't quite understand, they can always Google it and look it up. And uh, the the website is also searchable now. So if you put in Photoshop or Nature or, or Macro, you'll also see everybody who's doing something on that subject. So you can also do a very kind of modern day without a highlighter, or we have it in a variety of different ways. So different oh. people like different ways of looking at things. Maybe you love Adam Jones and you want to see every program he's doing. You can actually just put in Adam Jones and everything pops up Im immediately that he's presenting. So a difference may, you have a speaker who's doing multiple programs? Yes. Oh, now that's very interesting. Most take. of our speakers are doing two or three programs. So. So you're making my life much harder. <laughs> yes. Wow. In, in a more interesting way. Yes. Okay. <laughs>
first thing that's coming up is Padma. And Padma has been at our station. Yes. Uh, I've done a couple of shows on her. And her work is coming up. And she does phenomenal flower photography. So she's actually bringing those light boxes with her. She's doing a three-hour immersion pre-conference. But then she also has an open slot where people can come and they can learn how to be able to do this type of photography. And she shares her tips, um, as you know, from having her on the show. She's a you know very creative person. And she's very willing to share what she knows. And I, she was at uh, my local camera club, uh, New Haven Camera Club, and she uh, it cannot be more giving of the information. She really mm -hmm. is she doing is she doing one on the cathedrals? She's also doing verderamas and landscape photography. So A, a flower photography program, and then she's doing a architectural, like, verderama type program. Oh, she, she's she's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I understand you're having a David... A Kubian? A Kubian. You want to talk about David? And he's going to be coming up showing us, he does bird photography, you mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now, where is... Jordan. I think. Um, but he's actually doing three programs for us. He's doing one on backyard photography, how to make your backyard a photography oasis. Because those are not in my backyard. <laughs> Correct. So we have the Birds of Prey coming in. Tamron is sponsoring mm -hmm. the Birds of Prey for yep. Friday for a pre-conference. Yeah, and, and David will, again, help uh, attendees, t t uh, the, uh, Tamron. test out the lens, see if they want to buy it or if they just want to try it out. This Again, this is a way, low cost way of experimenting with big lenses. And uh, you know, the animals can be can be taken with a 70, 200, 300 or 500 millimeter well, that's lens. Well, that's a good, yeah. um, good remark that you had mm -hmm. because I remember one year I tried out a lens because I really thought I wanted it, mm -hmm. but it was too heavy for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in, instead of investing all this money into yeah. a lens, yeah. then it's, you know, try before you buy. And yeah. and they're very good about, and all, there are several vendors. Many yeah. of our vendors loan. Many, so and that, that was our cameras. goal, is to get yeah. a lot of camera lenses or camera bodies in the hands of the attendees. Yeah, very, so, very, very, very yeah. interesting. So this and conference shooting. is not just sitting in a dark room listening yeah. to presentations. There's certainly some of that, but it's a lot about getting out and shooting the photo walks, the photo opportunities. It's about using what you learned and applying what you learned. In the age of digital photography, there's no reason not to shoot a lot. Well, when I did film, yeah. I always shot a lot, yeah. but now it's kind of ridiculous. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah, it it's is. fun ridiculous. I love hearing my clutter click. I love hearing it. <laughs> And I bet you, you have a blister at the end of your finger. Yeah, I did that in the fireworks. I was showing Henry's working yeah. the camera tonight, and he was at our uh, Brantford fireworks, mm -hmm. and I was showing him some of the photos, and he said, you did that with a phone? And I was, yeah, I did. You know, it's <laughs> we actually do have iPhone sessions last yeah, know, year and this year. That. So that some people, the best camera is the one you have with them. So we actually have about, I don't know, five or six iPhone sessions that are dedicated for now, that. Now, that's, that's a good comment. The mm -hmm. best camera is the one you have with you. Mm -hmm. And so it's better than not taking a picture. Yep. But I know Henry loved my photos. <laughs> um, the next one is you're talking about bugs. Bugs. The next image coming up, and that's Kathy Baca. Yep. Kathy Baca is, uh, this is her second year with us, and she is bringing her bugs. So they love to be photographed. And now, how do not. you know that? Well, because if you look closely, in the macro, you can see a smile. <laughs> um, but all seriousness, they are, bugs are great to, to be photographed in, and most of us do not own those kinds of bugs, except for Lisa, you know? <laughs> Um, but the bugs are, are wonderful, you know, uh, subject matter to focus. And this is where a good case in point where you can focus using uh, selective focus. She actually, so wait a minute, she actually owns, she these, owns bugs? these bugs? Yes, Kathy, yeah. Yeah. She, she raises them. She mm -hmm. has like the, the rhinoceros beetle and the praying yeah. mantis and the dung beetles. and yep. Yep. <laughs> Wow. And people can see how her, her terrarium is set up so you can get a nice picture. You can see how the camera lights are set up so you can get the right exposure. Is she and married? And have the right light on. Her husband lets her keep bugs? I don't know. Well, we'll have to find out. <laughs> yes. Well, I know you two are married yeah. and you let her keep frogs and chameleons. I'm just yeah. saying. 
With Kathy, too, there's a three-hour immersion pre-conference that you can take, or there's going to be an open period where you can just come in and take a couple of pictures and mm -hmm. leave. So you kind of get your choice of do you want to be three hours of take a few bug pictures and go on to something else. Well, that's also an interesting aspect where there are setups downstairs in the yeah. university mm -hmm. and um, and there are various setups. Yeah. And what I like to do is um, instead of spending a lot of time trying to shoot them, I would like to shoot the setup Correct. so if I mm -hmm. can go home and maybe imi imitate it, yep. you know, some someday I might follow through on what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, I'm having a little trouble. If you could remind me how much time I have, I would appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Um, now, we have another person, Lewis Kemper, with creativity. Could you tell me he, that next slide is coming up? Now, that name is, ooh. So Lewis Kemper does a variety of nature techniques. Um, he's a, 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 he just got sponsored by Tamron, Tamron as yep. well. Um, but he does um, he just takes his kayak sometimes and goes out and photographs. Or these are long exposures. So he's doing a program on lights and shadows. He's doing a program on time and creativity. So photography is kind of neat in that you get to freeze time. Our eye can't see those clouds moving like that. And yet there's techniques within the photography arena that allow you to kind of freeze time like that and capture some of these wonderful clouds that we see sometimes. Now you uh, said to me uh, he goes out in his kayak. Does he protect? Does he have a special way of protecting his camera? Um, I guess we're going to have to probably, go to the program. He probably does. I don't know. Yeah, he um, probably does. He probably has a, a bag or some kind of uh, mm -hmm. aqua bag that he fits over the camera or the lens. And uh, when he kayaks, or maybe he's, you know, some photographers are that good and they mm -hmm. have good balance, but. I can, that's a very good question, yeah, you know, how know. do you that's protect good. your gear when you're in a kayak or a canoe? Because they tip easily. Yes. Very I, easily. I've been in a canoe with them. Lewis, is also, Lewis so. is also doing a couple of image reviews, and there's a variety of different ways to get your images critiqued, too. So there's a pre-conference image review, there's a during the conference portfolio review, there's a session that's two now hours why long. why would someone want... I don't know how to improve. Most of the time when you're taking a picture, you don't just want your family telling you you're good. You actually want to learn how to improve your photography. What are your strengths? What are things you need to be able to work on? Perhaps you are interested in competing into contests, or perhaps you just want to better your photography for your own sake. That is the answer because everyone wants their family and friends to love what they do, <laughs> but you're never going to grow that way. Right. So that's a good comment. Um, now we have um, Christy Odom. Odom. So she's a Nikon ambassador, and we're really excited to have Christy come and be our keynote speaker in the Fine Arts Center this year. Um, to the best of our recollection, this is our 74th annual conference, and she is the first woman that has presented in the Fine Arts Center on Saturday evening. So that so. means I have to stay up and go. Yes, and you're going to like her. She has a lot of energy. She's down to earth. She's humble. She's creative. She just loves capturing different you know, scenes, different animals. She rock climbs and hangs off of things. She is just an amazing woman. I think she's just going to floor us Saturday night. Look at these images are terrific. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love the image of the ape. Is it an ape or yep. gorilla? The, the angle of it is very different angle. I've never seen that. She's very. also doing a program on how she's won several photo contests like Nature's Best Photo Contest and others and she's doing a three-hour session on how to win those types of contests if you're interested in winning those. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This looks terrific. Then we have um, Peter Baumgarten. Okay, and he's doing night photography? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an Olympus visionary, and he's from Ontario, Canada. So he's come a long way, so we're very, very excited to have him here. And he's doing several programs, and one of them is night photography with the new Olympus cameras. You know, these start star stacking uh, images on the lower right, that's taken with one picture. Wow. Not a looked... series of pictures, you know. That and you there's that word again, stacking. Mm-hmm. Okay, Rad Drew is here from Topaz. Yes. So Rad Drew is known for his iPhoneography, and he's also known for his Topaz. He does quite a few webinars for Topaz, and he does this creativity, whether it's on his iPhone and using apps or whether it's using Topaz. Um, he's doing several programs for us, both on iPhone, on Topaz, on creating painterly pictures, and he's also doing a three-hour hands-on immersion um, into uh, Topaz and using painterly styles for Topaz. Wow. 
And you know, I'm, what I'm thinking is uh, one of the jobs that you've given me is to greet the speakers. What a good job for me. <laughs> and I can't wait to meet the available so it's not one of these they just kind of come in give their program and then they leave I mean you can watch a webinar or YouTube or whatever to do that they're around so you get to talk with them during the weekend yes. they might be coming up and helping you during the weekend you can go up to you can approach them afterwards so it's an opportunity to perhaps show them your pictures or ask them advice and pick their brain as well And then uh, we have to do this one quickly because we're starting to run out of time. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mark Batista. He's been mm -hmm. on our show and he's yes. fabulous. Mm -hmm. I look, I love his work. Absolutely love his work. So he's also doing two programs for us. He's doing a still life program, um, and he's going to be talking about those techniques for creating some of these interesting still lifes. And then he's bringing things with him so that you have a chance to be able to photograph them. And then he's doing another program on Rembrandt lighting. So people will be able to have an opportunity to come in and learn how to photograph a very specific lighting technique. I've, I've always loved the, the woman growing out of the tree. Yeah. I've, and yeah, I know he's, he's I've been to a few places where he's, yeah. I absolutely love it. Now, what is the uh, website for this, for this uh, program? NECCCphotoconference.org. And once you go on there, you can search for things. There's tabs up at the top, but there's a really fast search engine. Uh, Shane Cullen's made our, that uh, website for our conference. And if you just put in, like I said, nature or Adam Jones or creativity, it'll show you everything immediately. It just pops up so that you can um, have all that information at your fingertips. It shows you how to register. It answers your questions. And if this question it doesn't answer, it gives you the information of who to click on to get that further information. I have to tell you, um, I know about the conference, but listening to you talk, I'm so excited to go. But earrings. <laughs> yes. So I, I'm just saying, so you know, really. Now, Tom, you're laughing, but that is important. You can zoom in on the camera. Yeah, earrings. camera earrings. You know, I mean, she has no earrings that are cameras. But, but what's fun about the conference is that it's a bunch of people like us that were all interested in photography. We're all excited about it. So you mentioned earlier that even if you don't know anybody, you're going to leave with some friends. And if you haven't seen friends. them in a year, mm -hmm. you're going to get reacquainted with people that yes. you have that in yes. common with. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you Welcome. need more information, you could go to NECCC and check out their website. And even if you just want to peruse and look at some of the speakers and Google their names and look up what they do, if you need to contact me, for if you somehow don't, don't uh, get that information, you always can contact me here at BCTV, or you can email me at jmdh at comcast.net. Good job remembering all that. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for thank having us. Yes. Looking, looking forward to the conference. Yeah, so really looking forward to it. Thank, thank you. you.